Let's take a look at this, try one more. Look carefully at this number line. How is it different than some of the other number lines we've been locating fractions on? That's right. This number line doesn't start at zero. What does it start at? Say it fast. Yes, it starts at one. What does it end at? That's right, it ends at three. Where did the zero go? Did it disappear? Hmm, say your answer out loud. No, that's right. It did not disappear. The zero is left of the one, just like a regular number line. It didn't disappear. It's just not being shown on this part of the number line. Today, you can think of our number lines as chunks of a larger number line. Sometimes it's going to start at zero holes, but sometimes it's going to start at a different whole number. As you look at number lines and locate fractions on a number line today, you have to remember to always start by thinking, how many holes are represented on this number line and what hole does my number line start with? Great. How many equal intervals should we have in each hole? Say your answers out loud. That's right. We need three equal intervals in each hole. Because in the problem, they're asking us to place four thirds and eight thirds on the number line. You know that our denominator tells us that the whole needs to have three equal parts. Great. Should we start labeling at zero thirds? Should we start labeling here as zero thirds? I know we started our last number line at zero. No, you're exactly right. We can't start at zero thirds because we aren't showing a zero on this number line. Without seeing that part of the number line, how can we figure out how many thirds are the same as one whole? I heard you say that we know that three thirds makes one whole. So we can label right here with three thirds to start. If that confuses you, take a look at this picture here. Remember, we learned that fractions that have the same numerator and denominator are equal to one whole. That's because if we partitioned a circle into three equal parts and we needed to shade in the whole circle, that means we would have shaded in all three parts. If three thirds is the same as one whole, how many thirds do we have at two holes? Say your answer out loud. That's exactly right. We would have six thirds. If one hole has three equal parts shaded, two holes means we need to shade in three more equal parts for a total of six equal parts in two holes. Nice. When we start with whole numbers, we have to think, what hole does my number line start with? And what fraction is equivalent to the whole that I'm starting with? Now that we've labeled the start of our number line, what can we count by to label the rest of our endpoints? Say your answer out loud. That's right, we can count by thirds because the unit fraction is one third. We know this because each of our holes have been partitioned 
into three equal parts. All right, let's count by thirds. Three thirds, four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds. How can we find four thirds on our number line? Say your answer out loud. That's right, we could start at three thirds and count up one third, or we could start at six thirds and count back to four thirds. Where could we find eight thirds on our number line? That's right, we could start at six thirds and count up to eight thirds, or we could count start at nine thirds and count back to eight thirds. Thanks for your help working on this together team. Before we move on to the rest of our practice problems, remind me, how can we figure out where a fraction that is greater than one would be on our number line? Say your answers out loud. I heard you say that first, we need to think how many holes are represented on this number line and what hole does my number line start with? if we're starting with zero or a different whole number. If we're starting with a different whole number, we need to think what fraction is equivalent or equal to the whole that I'm starting with. We can use the denominator to help us figure out what fraction represents the whole that we're starting with. Then to determine what unit fraction to use, we need to think how many parts are in one whole? Then we can count by the unit fraction to label each of our endpoints. I'm excited to see you use these thinking steps as you jump into your practice today.